ज्ञानकोश इतिहास रामायण बाय पैक्ट ज्ञानकोश वाल्मीकि रामायण बालकांड ओम गणना गणपति हवामह कवि कवीनापोत्रवत्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मण ब्रह्मण पथ आन शृण्वनोतिदन अपदर्ता दातारम सर्वसंपदा लोकाभिराम श्रीराम भूय भूय नमा मनोजव मरुतुल्य वेगम जितेन्द्रिय बुद्धिमता वरिष्ठ वाताज वनरयूध मुख्यम श्रीरामदूत शिसा नमा कुजन राम रामे मधुर मधुराक्षर आरूह्य कविता शाखा वंदे वाल्मीकिल वाल्मीकि रामायण कैंटे ट्वेल बालकांड द सैक्रिफाइस बिगन अगेन द स्प्रिंग विद जीनियल हीट रिटर्निंग मेड द इयर कंप्लीट टू विन हिम सन्स विदाउट डिले हिज वो द किंग रिजॉल्व टू पे एंड टू वसिस्टा सेंटली मैन इन मॉडेस्ट वर्ड्स हिज स्पीच बिगैन प्रिपेयर द राइट विद ऑल थिंग fit as is ordained in holy writ and keep with utmost care a path whatever its sacred form might mar the art my lord my trustiest guide kind hearted and my friend beside so is it meet thou undertake this heavy task for duty sake then he of twice born men the best his glad assent at once expressed Fain will I do whatever may be desired, O honored King, by thee. To ancient priests he spoke, who trained in holy rites, keep skill had gained. Here gods be stationed, good and sage. Religious men of trusted age and various workmen send and call, who frame the door and build the wall with men of every art and trade. who read the stars and plied the spade and mimes and minstrels hither bring and damsels train to dance and sing then to the learned men he said in many a page of scripture read be yours each right perform to see according to the king's decree and stranger brahmans quickly call to this great right that welcomes all pavilions for the princes decked with art and ornament erect and handsome booths by thousands made the brahman visitors to shade arranged in order side by side with meat and drink and all supplied and ample stables we shall need for many an elephant and steed and chambers where the men may lie and vast apartments broad and high fit to receive the countless band of warriors come from distant land for our own people to provide sufficient tents extended wide and stores of meat and drink prepared and all that can be needed there and food in plenty must be found for guests from all the country round of various wines presents make for honor not for pity sake that fit regard and worship be pay to each caste in due decree and let not wish a rat excite your hearts the meanest guest to slight but still observe with special grace those who obtain the foremost place whether for happier skill in art or bearing in the right their part do you i pray with friendly mind perform the task you to you assign and work the right 
as bids the law without omission slip or flaw they answered as thou seest fit so will we do and not omit the sage vasista then addressed sumantra called at his behest the princes of the earth invite and famous lords who guard the right priest warrior merchant lowly thrall in countless thousand summons all wherever their home be far or near gather the good with you honor here and janaka whose imperial sway the men of mithila obey the form of o the dreaded of foes who all the lore of scriptures know invite him here with honor high king dasratha old ali and kashi's lord of gentle speech who finds a pleasant word for each in length of days our monarch speed illustrious king invite him here the father of our rulers bride known for his virtues far and wide the king whom kekaya's realms obey him with his son in white i pray and lopapada the anga's king true to his oaths and god like bring for be thine invitation sent to west and south and orient call those who rule rashtra land suvirask realm and sindhu strand and all the kings of earth is aside in friendship's bonds with us allied invite them all to hazen in with retinue and kith and kin vasista speech without delay sumantra bent him to obey and sent his trusty and voice forth eastward and westward south and north obedient to the saint's request himself he hurried forth and pressed each nobler chief and lord and king to hasten to the gathering before the saint vasista stood all those who wrought with stone and wood and showed the work which every one in furtherance of the right had done rejoiced their ready zeal to see thus to the craftsmen all said he i charge ye masters see to this that there be nothing done amiss and this i pray in mind be born that not one gift a give in scorn whenever scorn a gift attends great sin in his who thus offends and now some days and nights had passed and kings began to gather fast and precious gems in liberal store as gifts to the city the bore then joy thrilled through vasista's breast as thus the monarch he addressed obedient to thy high decree the kings my lord are come to thee and it has been my care to greet and honor all with reverence meet thy servant task is ended quite and all is ready for the right come forth then to the sacred ground where all in order will be found then rishisringa confirmed the tale not did their words to move him fail the stars propitious influence lend when forth the world's great ruler went then by the sages vasista led the priest began to speed those glorious rites wherein is shed the life blood of the steed ज्ञानकोश इतिहास रामायण बाय पैक्ट ज्ञानकोश वाल्मीकि रामायण बालकांड ओम गणना गणपति हवामहे कवि कवीना मुपोत्रवत्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मणा ब्रह्मण पथ आनतृण्वन्नोतिदसाधन 
ಅಪದಾಮಪಹರ್ತಾರಂ ದಾತಾರಂ ಸರ್ವಸಂಪದ ಲೋಕಾಭಿರಮ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಭೂಯೋ ಭೂಯೋ ನಮ್ಯಹಂ ಮನೋಜವ ಮರುತತುಲ್ಯವೇಗಂ ಜಿತೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಬುದ್ಧಿಮತ ವರಿಷ್ಠ ವಾತಾತ್ಮಜ ವಾನರಯೂಧಮುಖ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮದೂತ ಶಿರಸ ನಮಿ ಕುಜಂತನ್ ರಮ ರಮೇತಿ ಮಧುರ ಮಧುರಾಕ್ಷರ ಆರುಹ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾಶಾಂ ವಂದೇ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಕೋಕಿಲ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೆಟ್ರಲ್ ಬಾಲಕಾಂಡ ದ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್ ಬಿಗನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಪ್ರಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಜೀನಿಯಲ್ ಹೀಡ್ ರಿಟರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಮೇಡ್ ದ ಇಯರ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಟು ವಿನ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಸನ್ಸ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಡಿಲೇ ಹಿಸ್ ಓ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ ರಿಸಾಲ್ವ್ ಟು ಪೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ವಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆ ಸೇಂಟ್ಲಿ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಇನ್ ಮಾಡೆಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸ್ಪೀಚ್ ಬಿಗ್ಯಾನ್ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಫಿಟ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಆರ್ಡೇನ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಹೋಲಿ ವ್ರಿಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೀಪ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಟ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಕೇರ್ ಅ ಫಾರ್ ವಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೇಕ್ರೆಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಮೈಟ್ ಮಾರ್ ದ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಮೈ ಲಾಟ್ ಮೈ ಟ್ರಸ್ಟಿಯಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ kind hearted and my friend beside so is it meet thou undertake this heavy task for duty sake then he of twice born men the best his glad assent at once expressed fain will i do whatever may be desired o honored king by thee to ancient priests he spoke who trained in holy rites keep skill had gained here gods be station good and sage religious men of trusted age and various workmen send and call who frame the door and build the wall with men of every art and trade who read the stars and ply the spade and mimes and minstrels hither bring and damsels train to dance and sing then to the learned men he said in many a page of scripture read be yours each right perform to see according to the king's decree and stranger brahmans quickly call to this great right that welcomes all pavilions for the princes decked with art and ornament erect and handsome booths by thousands made the brahman visitors to shade arranged in order side by side with meat and drink and all supplied and ample stables we shall need for many an elephant and steed and chambers where the men may lie and vast apartments broad and high fit to receive the countless band of warriors come from distant land for our own people to provide sufficient tents extended wide and stores of meat and drink prepared and all that can be needed there and food in plenty must be found for guests from all the country round of various wines presents make for honor not for pity sake that fit regard and worship be pay to each caste in due decree and let not wish or wrath excite your hearts the meanest guest to slight but still observe with special grace those who obtain the foremost place whether for happier skill in art or bearing in the right their part do you i pray with friendly mind perform the task you to you assign and work the right as bids the law without omission slip or flaw they answered as thou seest fit so will we do and not omit the sage vasista then addressed sumantra called at his behest the princes of the earth invite and famous lords who guard the right priest warrior merchant lowly thrall in countless thousands summons all wherever their home be far or near gather the good with you honor here and janaka whose imperial sway the men of mithila obey the form of o the dreaded of foes who all the lore of scriptures knows invite him here with honor high 
King Dasaratha's old alley and Kashi's lord of gentle speech, who finds a pleasant word for each. A length of days our bonas speed, illustrious king invite him here, the father of our ruler's bride, known for his virtues far and wide. The king whom Kekaya's realms obey, him with his son invite, I pray. And Lopapada, the Anga's king, true to his oaths and godlike bring, for be thine invitation sent to west and south and orient. Call those who rule Rashtra land, Suvira's realm and Sindhu strand, and all the kings of earth reside in friendship's bonds with us allied. Invite them all to Hazen in with retinue and kith and kin. Vasista speech without delay, Sumantra bent him to obey and sent his trusty envoys forth eastward and westward south and north, obedient to the saint's request, himself he hurried forth and pressed each nobler chief and lord and king to hasten to the gathering before the saint Vasista stood, all those who wrought with stone and wood and showed the work which every one in furtherance of the right had done. Rejoiced their ready zeal to see Thus to the craftsmen all said he, I charge ye, masters, see to this that there be nothing done amiss, and this I pray in mind be born, that not one gift a give in scorn. Whenever scorn a gift attends, great sin in his who thus offends. And now some days and nights had passed, and kings began to gather fast and precious gems in liberal store as gifts to Dasaratha bore. Then joy thrilled through Vasista's breast, as thus the monarch he addressed. Obedient to thy high decree, that kings, my lord, are come to thee. And it has been my care to greet, and honour all with reverence meet. Thy servant task is ended quite, and all is ready for the right. Come forth then to the sect, Cred ground where all in order will be found. Then Rishisringa confirmed the tale, nor did their words to move him fail. The stars propitious influence lend when forth the world's great ruler went. Then by the sages Vasista led, the priest began to speed those glorious rites wherein is shed the life blood of the steed. Jnana Kosha, Itihasas, Ramayana, by Pact. Jnana Kosha, Valmiki Ramayana, Balakanda. Om Ganana Antwa Ganavadigum Havame Kavin Kavina Mopotravatamum Jetara Jem Brahmanan Brahmanat Patana Truman Notivit Hidasadanam Apadam Apartaram Dataram Sarvasam Padam Loka Viramum Sri Ramum Buyo Buyo Namam Mono Jevam Maruta Tulyevegam Chitendriyam buddhimatam varishtam Vatatmajam vanarayudhamukhyam Sri Ramadutam sirasanamami Kujantan ramarameti madhuram madhuraksharam Aruhya kavita shakham Vande valmiki kokilam Valmiki ramayana balakanda Canto 13, The Sacrifice Finished 
The circling year had filled its course, and back was brought the wandering horse. Then upon Sir Jew's northern strand began the ride the king had planned, with Rishi Sringar the forms to guide. The Brahmans to their task applied, at that great offering of the steed, their lofty-minded king decreed. The priests who all the scriptures knew performed their part in order due, and circled round in Solomon train as pursuits of the law ordain. Pravarjas rites were duly sped, for Upasas the flames were fed. Then from the plant the juice was squeezed, and those high saints with minds well pleased performed the mystic rites begun with bathing earth the rise of sun. They gave the portion Indra's claim and hemmed the king whom none can blame. The midday bathing followed next, observed as bids the holy text. Then the good priest with utmost care inform the scripture's rules declare. For the third time pure water shed on high soul Dasradha's head. Then Rishasringa and all the rest to Indra and the gods address their sweet toned hymn of praise and prayer, and called them in the right to share with sweetest song and hymn and tone. They gave the gods in heaven and throne as duty bird bids the gifts they claim, the holy oil that feeds the flame, and many an offering were there was paid, and none one slip, and all was made for the most careful heat they saw, that all was done by Veda law. And not one slip, and all was made for with most careful heed they saw that all was done by Veda law. None all those days were seen oppressed by hunger or by toil distress. Why speak of humankind? No beast was there that lacked an ample feast. For there was store for all who came, for orphan child and lonely day. The old and young were well supplied the poor and hungry satisfied. Throughout the day ascetics fed, and those who roamed to beg their bread, while all around the cry was still, Give forth, give forth, and eat your fill. Give forth with liberal hand the meal, and various robes in largest deal. Urged by these cries on every side, unweariedly their task they applied, and heaps of food like hills in size, in boundless plenty met the eyes, and lakes of sauce each day renewed, refreshed the weary multitude. And strangers there from distant land, and women folk in crowded bands, the best of food and drink obtain, as the great rite the king ordained. Apart from all the Brahmins there, thousands and thousands took their share, of various dainties sweet to taste, on plates of gold and silver placed. All ready set, as when they willed, the twice born men their places filled, and servants in fair garments dressed, waited upon each Brahmin guest. Of cheerful mind and main were they, with gold and jeweled earrings gay. The best of Brahmins praised the fair of countless sorts of flavour rare, and thus to Raghu's son they cried, We bless thee and are satisfied. Between the rites home some Brahmins spent the time in learnt argument, with ready flow of speech sedate, and then to vanquish in debate. There day by day the holy train performed all rites as rules ordained, no priest in all that host was found, but kept the woes that held him bound. None but the holy Vedas knew, and all their sixfold signs too. No Brahman was 
there was found unfit to speak with eloquence and wit, and now the appointed time came near, the sacrificial post to rear, they brought them and prepared to fix of bell and khadir, six and six, six made of the palasa tree, of fig wood one apart to be, of slish mat and of divadar, one column each, the mightiest far, so thick the two, the arms of man, their ample gift would fail to span. All these with utmost care were wrought by hand of priests in scriptures taught, and all with gold were held it bright to add new splendor to the right. Twenty and one those stakes in all, each one and twenty cubits tall, and one and twenty ribbons there hung on the pillars bright and fair. Firm in the earth they stood at last, where cunning craftsmen fixed them fast, and there unshaken each remind, octagonal and smoothly planned. Then ribbons over all were hung, and flowers and scent around them flung. Thus decked they cast a glory forth like the great saints who start the north. The sacrificial altar then was raised by skillful twice-born men in shape and figure to behold an eagle with his wings of gold, with twice nine pits and formed threefold, each for some special god, beside the pillars were the victims tied. The birds that roamed the wood, the air, the water and the land were there, and snakes and things of reptile birth, and healing herbs that spring from earth. As texts prescribed in scripture found, three hundred victims there were bound, the steed devoted to the host of gods the gem they honor more was duly sprinkled then the queen kaushalya with a delighted mien with reverent steps around him space and with sweet wreaths the victim graced then with three swords in order due she smote the steed with joy and slew that night the queen a son to gain with calm and steady heart was fain by the dead charger's sight to stay from evening till the break of day then came three priests their care to lead the other queens to touch the steed upon kaushalyas to attend their company and aid to lend as by the hearth she still reclined with happy mane and cheerful mind with the rishas sringa the twice born came and praised and blessed the royal dame the priest who well his duty knew and every sense could well subdue from out the bonny chambers freed and boiled the marrow of the steed about the steam the monarch bent and as he smelled the fragrant scent in time and order drew afar all error that his hopes could mar then sixteen priests together came and cast into the sacred flame the severed members of the horse made ready all in ordered course on piles of holy fig tree raised the meaner victims bodies blaze the steeds of all the sin creatures slain alone required a pile of cane three days as is by law decreed lasted that offering of the steed the chastustam began the rite and when the sun renewed his light the ukatya followed after came the athiratha's holy flame these were the rites and many more arranged by light of holy lord the apatharyam of mighty power and each performed in proper hour the abhijit and visajit with every form the service fit, and with the sacrifice at night. The Jyotisham and Ayush rite, the Athiratha literally lasting through the night, is a division of the service of the Jyotisha, Toma. The Abhijit, the every where victorious, is the name of a subdivision of the great sacrifice of the Gavamanya. 
the Viswajit or the all-conquering is a similar subdivision. Ayushi is the name of a service forming a division of the Abhipavala sacrifice. The Apothorium is the seventh or the last part of the Jyotish Toma, Homa, for the performance of which it is not essentially necessary, but a voluntary sacrifice instituted for the attainment of a specific desire. The literal meaning of the word would be in conformity with the Pradhama Manorama, a sacrifice which procures the attainment of the desired object. Duktaya is a slight modification of the Agni Toma sacrifice. The task was done as laws prescribed. The monarch, glory of this tribe, bestowed the land in liberal grant. Upon the sacred ministrants, he gave the region of the east, his conquest to the Hotri priest. The West the celebrant obtained, the South the priest presiding gained. The Northern region was the share of him who chanted forth the prayer. Thus did each priest obtain his meed at the great slaughter of the steed, ordained the best of all to be. By self-existent deity, Ishwaku's son, with joyful mind, this noble fee to each assigned, but all the priests with one accord address that unpolluted Lord. It's thine alone to keep the whole of this broad earth in firm control. No gift of lands from thee we see. To guard these realms our hands were weak. On sacred lore our days are spent. Let other gifts our wants contain. The chief of old Ikshwaku's line Give them ten hundred thousand kind, a hundred millions of fine gold, the same in silver four times of told. But every priest in presence there with one accord resigned his share to Saint Vasista, high of soul, and Rishisringa they gave the whole. That largesses pleased those Brahmins well who bade the princes his wishes tell. Then Dasrada, mighty king, made answer thus to Rishisringa, O holy hermit of thy grace, what save the increase of my race? He spoke, nor was his prayer denied. The best of the Brahmins thus reply, Four sons, O monarch, shall be thine, upholders of thy royal line. Jnana Kosha, Itihasas, Ramayana, by Pact. Om Ganana Antva Ganapadikam Havamehe Kavin Kavina Mupotra Vattamam Jettara Jam Brahmanan Brahmanat Patanat Runmanu Tivit Sadhanam Apadam apartaram dataram sarvasam padam loka viramam sri ramam buyo buyo namam yaham mano javam marutatulya vegam jitendriyam buddhimatam varishtam vatatma jam vanaryudhamukhyam sri ramadutam sirasa namami Kujantan Ramarameti Madhuram Madhuraksharam Aruhiya Kavita Shakham Vande Valmiki Kokilam Jnana Kosha Valmiki Ramayana Balakanda Valmiki Ramayana, Balakanda, Canto 14, 
Ravan doomed. The saint, well read in holy lore, pondered a while his answer over, and thus again addressed the king, his wandering thoughts gathering. Another right will I begin, which shall the sons thou cravest win, where all things shall be duly sped, and first Atharva text be read. Then by Vibhandaka's gentle son was that high sacrifice begun, the king's advantage seeking still the genius to perform his will. Now all the gods had gathered there, each one for his allotted share. Brahma, the ruler of the sky, Shantanu, Narayan, La, Lord Most High, and Holy Indra men might view with Marutas for his retinue. The heavenly charioter and saint and spirit pure from earthly taint with one accord had sought the place, the high-souled monarch's right to grace. Then to the gods who came to take their proper share, the hermit spoke. For you has Dasaratha slain the votive steed, a son to gain. Stern penance rites the king has tried, and in firm faith on you relied. And now with undiminished care, a second rite would fain prepare. But, O ye gods, consent to grant the longing of your supplicant. For him beseeching hand I lift, and pray you all to grant the gift. That four fair sons of high renown, the offerings of the king may crown. They to the hermit son replied, His longing shall be gratified, for Brahman in most high degree, we love the king and honor thee. These words the gods in answer said, and vanished thence by Indra led, thus to the Lord, the worlds who made, the immortals are assembled prayed. O Brahma, mighty by thy grace, Ravan, who rules the giant race, torments us in his senseless pride, and penance loving saints beside, for thou well pleased in days of old, gave us the boon that makes him bold, that God nor demon ever should kill his charmed life, for so thy will. We honouring that high behest, bear all his rage, though so distressed, that Lord of Jain's fears and fell, scourges the earth and heaven and hell. Mad with thy boon, his impetuous rage, smites saints and bard and god and sage. The sun himself withholds his glow, the wind in fear forbears to blow. The fire restrains his wanted heat. Where stand the dreaded Ravan's feet, And necklaced with the wandering wave, The sea before him fears to rave. Kuvera's self in sad defeat Is driven from his blissful seat. We see, we feel the giant's might, And woe comes over us and affright. To thee, O Lord, thy suppliants pray, to find some cure, this plague to stay. Thus, by the gathered God's address, he pondered in his secret breast, and said, One only way I find to slay this fiends of evil mind. He prayed me once his life to God from demon, God and heavenly bard, and spirits of the earth and air, I, and I consented, heard his prayer. But the proud giant in his corn reckoned not of man of woman born. None else may take his life away, but only man the fiend may slay. The gods with Indra at their head rejoiced to hear the words he said. Then crowned with glory like a flame, Lord Vishnu the council came. His hands shell, maze and discus bore, and saffron were the robes he wore. Riding his eagle through the crowd, 
as the sun rides upon a cloud with bracelets of fine gold he came loud welcomed by the gods acclaim his praise they sang with one concern and cried in lowly reverence bent o lord whose hand fears madhu slew be thou our refuge firm and true friend of the suffering worlds art thou we pray thee help thy suppliants now then vishnu spake a gods declare what may i do to grant your prayer king dashratha thus cried they fervent in penance many a day the sacrificial steed has slain longing for sons but all in vain now were the cry of us for loan incarnate as his seed be born three queens as he each lovely dame like beauty modesty or fame divide thyself in four and be his offspring by these noble three man's nature take and slay in fight ravan who laughs at heavenly might his common scourge this rankling thorn whom the three worlds too long have borne for ravan in the senseless pride of might unequalled has defied the host of heaven and plagues with woe and the angel and bard and saint below crushing each spirit and each maid who plays in nandan's heavenly shade o conquering lord to thee we bow our surest hope and trust art thou regard the world of men below and slay the god's tremendous foe when the suppliant gods had prayed this wise reply narayan made what task demands my presence there and whence this dread e gods declare the gods replied we were o lord fears ravan reverend abode be thine the glorious task we pray in human form this fine to slay be thee of all the blessed alone this sinner may be overthrown he gained by penance long and dire the favor of the mighty sire then he who every gift bestows guarded the fine from heavenly foes and gave a pledge his life that kept from all things living man except on him thus armed no other foe than man may deal the deadly blow assume o king a mortal birth and strike the demon to the earth then vishnu god of gods the lord supreme by all the worlds adored to brahma and to the suppliant spake dismiss your fear for your dear sake in battle will i smite him dead the cruel find the immortals dread and lords of and ministers and all his kith and kin with him shall fall than in the world of mortal men 10000 years and hundred stand i as a human king will reign and guard the earth as my domain god sent and nymph and ministerial throng with heavenly voices raised their song in hymns of triumph to the god whose conquering feet on madhu trod champion of gods as man appear this cruel ravan slay the thorn that saints and hermits fear the plague that none can stay in savage fear uncontrolled his pride forever grows he dares the lord of gods to hold among his deadly foes ज्ञानकोश इतिहास रामायण बाई पैक्ट 
ಓಂ ಗಣಾನಾ ಗಣಪತಿ ಹವಾಮಹೆ ಕವಿ ಕವೀನಾಪೋತ್ರಮ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠರಾಜ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಾನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಸ್ಪತಾನೃಣ್ಮನ್ನೋತಿಸಾಧನ ಅಪದಾಪರ್ತಾರ ದಾತಾರಸಂಪ ಲೋಕಾಭಿರಮ ಶ್ರೀರಮ ಭೂಯ ಭೂಯ ನಮ್ಯಹಂ ಮನೋಜವ ಮರುತತುಲ್ಯವೇಗಂ ಚಿತೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಬುದ್ಧಿಮತ ವರಿಷ್ಠ ವಾತಾತ್ಮಜ ವನರಯೂಧ ಮುಖ್ಯಂ ಶ್ರೀರಮದೂತ ಶಿರಸ ನಮಿ ಕುಜಂತನ್ ರಮ ರಮೇತಿ ಮಧುರ ಮಧುರಾಕ್ಷರ ಆರುಹ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾಶಾ ವಂದೇ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಕೋಕಿಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಕೋಶ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಬಾಲಕಾಂಡ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಬಾಲಕಾಂಡ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಟ when visit vishnu thus had given his promise to the gods of heaven he pondered in his secret mind a suited place of birth to find then he decreed the lotus eyed in four his being to divide and dashratha gracious king he chose as sir from whom to spring that childless prince of high renown who smote in war his foe men down at that same time with utmost care prepared the right that wins and hair then vishnu fain on earth to dwell bade the almighty sir farewell and vanished while a reverent crowd of gods and saints in worship bowed the monarch watched the sacred rite when a vast form of awful might of matchless splendor strength and size was manifest before his eyes from forth the sacrificial flame dark robed in red the being came his voice was drum like loud and low his face suffused with rosy glow like a huge lion's mane appeared the long locks of his hair and beard he shone with many a lucky sign and many a ornament divine a towering mountain in his height a tiger in his gait and might no precious mine more rich could be no burning flame more bright than he his arms embraced in loving hold like a dear wife a vase of gold whose silver lining held a draught of nectar as in heaven is quaffed a vase so vast so bright to review they scarce could count the vision true upon the king his eyes he bent and said the lord of life has sent his servant down o prince to be a messenger from heaven to thee the king with all his nobles by raised reverent hands and made reply welcome o glorious being say how can my care thy grace repay and why of him whom all adore does to the king he speak once more the gods accept thy worship they give thee the blessed fruit today and approach and take o glorious king this heavenly nectar which i bring for it shall give thee sons and wealth and bless thee with a store of health give it to those who fair queens of thine and bid them quaff the drink divine and they the princely sons shall bear long sought by sacrifice and prayer e o my lord the monarch said and took the vase from upon his head the gift of gods of fine gold brought with store of heavenly liquor brought he honored filled with transport new that wondrous being fate to view 
as round the envy of the god with reverential steps he is trod his a rank down that form of light arose and vanished from the sight high rapture filled the monarch's soul possessed of that celestial bowl as a, when a man by want distress with unexpected wealth is blessed and rays of transport seem to fall illuminating bower and hall as when the autumn moon rides high and floods with lovely light the sky quick to the lady's bower he sped and thus to queen kaushalya said this genial lecter take and quaff he spoke and gave the lady half part of the nectar that remained simitra from his hand obtained he gave to make her fruitful to kaikeyi half the residue a portion yet remaining there he paused a while to think then gave sumitra with her share the remnant of the drink thus on each queen of those fair three a part the king bestowed and with sweet hope a child to see their earning bosoms glowed the heavenly bowl the king supplied their longing souls relieved and soon with rapture and with pride each royal dame conceived he gazed upon each lady's face and triumphed as he gazed as in drawing his royal place by gods and spirits praised ज्ञानकोश इतिहास रामायण बाय पैक्ट ओम गणा गणपति हवामहे कवि कवीना मुपोत्रवत्तम जेतराज ब्रह्मणा ब्रह्मणस्पथान श्रृण्वन्नोतिद साधन अपदर्ता दतासंपदा लोकाभिराम श्रीराम भूय भूय नमा्यह मनोजव मरुतुल्य वेगम जितेन्द्रिय बुद्धिमता वरिष्ठ वातात्मज वनरयूध मुख्यम श्रीरामदूत शिसा नमा कुजन राम रामेति मधुर मधुराक्षर आरूह्य कविता शखा वंदे वाल्मीकिल ज्ञानकोश वाल्मीकिण बालकांड वाल्मीकि रामायण बालकांड कैंटो सिक्सटीन द वानराज वेन विष्णु दस हैड गॉन ऑन अर्थ फ्रॉम द ग्रेट किंग टू टेक हिज बर्थ द सेल्फ एग्जिस्टेंट लॉर्ड ऑफ ऑल एड्रेस द गॉड्स हु हर्ड हिज कॉल फॉर विष्णु सेक द स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड ट्रू हु सेक्स द गुड ऑफ ऑल ऑफ यू मेक हेल्प इन वॉर टू लैंड हिम एड in forms that change at will arrayed of wizard skill and hero might outstrippers of the wind in flight skilled in the arts of counsel wise and vishnu's peers in bold emprise with heavenly arts and prudence fraught by no devices to be caught skilled in all weapons lore and use as they who drink the immortal juice and let the nymphs supreme in grace and maidens of the minstrel race monkeys and snakes and those who row free spirits of the hill and grove and wandering daughters of the air in monkey form brave children bear so us the lords of wares i shaped born from my mouth as wide i gap thus by the mighty sire address 
they all obeyed his high behest and thus begot in countless swarm brave sons disguised in silvan form each god each sage became a sire each minstrel of the heavenly choir each fawn of children strong and good whose feet should roam the hill and wood snakes birds and spirits serpents bold had sons too numerous to be told bali the woodland horse who led high as mahendra's lofty head was indra's child that noblest fire the sun was great sugriva's sire tara the mighty monkey was offspring of krishna haspati tara the matchless chieftain boast for wisdom of the vanara host of gandamadana brave and bold the father was the lord of gold nala the mighty dear to fame of skillful vishwakarma came from agni nila bright as flame who in his splendor might and worth surpassed the sire who gave him birth the heavenly ashwins shift and fair were fathers of a noble pair who divida and mainda name for beauty like their sires were fame varun was father of susen of sarbha he who sends the rain hanuman best of monkey kind was son of him who breathes the wind like thunder bold in frame was he and shift as garuda self and flee these thousand did the gods create endowed with might that none could mate in monkey forms that changed at will so strong their wish the find to kill in mountain size like lions thought up sprang the wondrous multitude auxiliar hosts in every shape monkey and bear and highland ape in each the strength the might the main of his own parent god were seen some chiefs of vanara mothers came some of she bear and minstrel dame skilled in all arms in battles shock the branched tree the loosened rock and prompt should other weapons fail to fight and slay with tooth and nail their strength could shake the hills amain and rend the rooted trees in twain disturb with their impetuous sweep the rivers lord the ocean deep rend with their feet the seated ground and pass wide floods with airy bound or forcing through the sky their way the very clouds by force could say stay mad elephants that wander through the forest wilds could they subdue and with their furious shout could scare dead upon earth the birds of air so were the silver chieftains form thousands and thousands till they swam these were the leaders honored more the captains of the vanara host and to each lord and chief and guide was monkey of spring bonus beside then by the bears great monarch stood the other roamers of the wood and turned their pathless home to seek to forest and to mountain peak the leaders of the monkey band by the two brothers took their stand sugriva offspring of the sun and vali indra's mighty one they both endowed with garuda's might and skilled in all the arts of fight wandered in arms the forest through and lions snakes and tigers slew but every monkey ape and bear ever was bali special care with his vast strength and mighty arm he kept them from all scath and harm and so the earth with hill wood seas was filled with mighty ones like these of various shape and race and kind with proper homes to each assign with rama's champions fears and strong the earth was overspread high as the hills and clouds a throng with bodies vast and dread
ज्ञानकोश इतिहास रामायण बाय पैक्ट ज्ञानकोश वाल्मीकि रामायण बालकांड ओम गणना गणपति हवामहे कवि कवीनापोत्रवस्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मणा ब्रह्मणस्पथानुतिदन अपदापहर्ता दाता सर्वसंपदा लोकाभिराम श्रीराम भूय भूय नमा मनोजव मरुतुल्य वेगम जितेन्द्रिय बुद्धिमता वरिष्ठ वाताज वनरयूध मुख्यम श्रीरामदूत शिसा नमा कुजन राम रामे मधुर मधुराक्षर आरूह्य कविता शाखा वंदे वाल्मीकिल वाल्मीकिण बालकांड कैंटो सेवेंटीन ऋषि श्रृंगा रिटर्न नौ वेन द हई सोल्ड मोनाक्स राइट द अश्वेधा वॉज फिनिश्ड क्वाइट their sacrificial dues obtain the gods their heavenly homes regain the lofty minded saints withdrew each to his place with honor due and kings and chieftains one and all who came to grace the festival and dasratha er they went address them thus benevolent now may you each with joyful heart to your own realms o kings depart peace and good luck attend you there and blessing is my friendly prayer let cares of state each ma hand engage to guard his royal heritage a monarch from his throne expelled no better than the dead is held so he who cares for power and might must guard his realm and royal right such care a meed in heaven will bring better than rites and offering such care a king his country owes as man upon himself bestows when for his body he provides raiment and every needs besides for future days should kings foresee and keep the present earth free thus did the king the kings exhort they heard and turned them from the court and each to each in friendship bound went forth to all the realms around the rites were over the guests were sped the train the best of brahmans led in which the king with joyful soul with his dear wives and with the whole of his imperial host and train of cars and servants turned again and as a monarch dear to fame within his royal city came next rishyasringa well honored sage and shanta sought their hermitage the king himself of prudent mind attended him with troops behind and on all her men the town outpoured with saint vasista and their lord high mountain or a car of state over canopied fair santa sat drawn by white oxen while a band of servants marched on either hand great gifts of countless prize she bore with sheep and goats and gems in store like beauty self the lady shone with all the jewels she had on as happy in her sweet content peerless amid the fair she went not queen polomis self could be more loving to her lord than she she who had lived in happy ease honored with all her heart could please while dames and kings folk ever wait to see her wishes gratified 
Soon as she knew her husband's will, again to seek the forest still, was ready for the hermit's court. Nor murmured at her altered lord, the king attended to the wild, that hermit and his own dear child, and in the centre of a throng of noble courtiers rode along. The sage's son had left prepared a lodge within the wood and there, while they lingered, blit and gay, then doubly honoured, went their way. The glorious hermit Rishyasringa, dear near, and thus besought the king, Return, my honoured lord, I pray, return upon thy homeward way. The monarch with the waiting crowd lifted his voice and wept aloud, and with eyes dripping still to eat of his good queen's he spake this speech. Kaushalya and Sumitra, dear, and thou, my sweet Kaikeyi, hear. All upon Santa's feast your gaze, the last time for a length of days. To Shanta's arms the ladies leapt, and hung about her neck and wept, and cried, O happy be the life of this great Brahma, Brahman and his wife. The wind, the fire, the moon on high, the earth, the streams, the circling sky, preserve thee in the wood, true spouse, devoted to thy husband's hold. And, O oh dear Santa, never neglect to pay the dues of meek respect to the great saint, thy husband's sire, with all observance and with fire. And, sweet one, pure of spot and blame, Forget not thou thy husband's claim. In every change in good and ill, let thy sweet words delight him still, and let thy worship constant be, her lord is woman's deity. To learn thy welfare, dearest friend, the king will many a Brahman send. Let happy thoughts thy spirit cheer, and be not troubled, daughter dear. These soothing words the lady said, and pressed their lips upon her head, each gave with size her last adieu. Then at the king's command withdrew, the king around the hermit went with circling footsteps reverent, and placed at Rishyasringa's command some soldiers of his royal band. The Brahman bowed in turn and cried, May fortune never leave thy side, O mighty king, with justice reign, and still thy people's loves retain. He spoke and turned away his face, and as the hermit went, the monarch rooted to the place, pursued with eyes intent. But when the sage had passed from view, King Dasarada turned him too, still fixing on his friend each thought. With such deep love his breast was fraught, Amid his people's loud acclaim, home to his royal seat he came, and lived delighted there, expecting when each queenly dame, upholder of his ancient fame, her promised son should bear the glorious sage his way pursued, till close before his eyes he viewed sweet Champa, Lopa Pada's fair town, Brethered with her champak's leafy crown, soon as the saint's approach he knew, the king to yield him honour due, went forth to meet him with a band of priests and nobles of the land. Hail, sage, he cried, O joy to me, what bliss it is, my lord, to see thee with thy wife and all thy train. Returning to my own town again, Thy father, honoured sage, is well, who hither from his woodland cell has sent full many a messenger for tidings both of thee and her. Then joyfully, for due respect, the monarch bade the town be decked. The king and Rishyasringa elate entered the royal city's gate, in front the chaplain rode, then loud and honoured with all care, by monarch and by courtier, there the glorious saint abode.
ज्ञानकोश इतिहास रामायण बाय पैक्ट ज्ञानकोश वाल्मीकि रामायण बालकांड ओम गणा गणपति हवामह कवि कवीनापोत्रवत्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मणा ब्रह्मण पथ आन शुण्वनोतिदन अपदर्ता दातारम सर्वसंपदा लोकाभिराम श्रीराम भूय भूय नमा्यह मनोजव मरुतुल्य वेगम जितेन्द्रिय बुद्धिमता वरिष्ठ वातात्मजम वनरयूध मुख्यम श्रीरामदूत शिसा नमा कुजन राम रामेति मधुर मधुराक्षर आरुह्य कविता शखा वंदे वाल्मीकिल वाल्मीकिण बालकांड Canto 18, Rishi Sringa's departure. The maid of India, blessed again to hold in her full lap the champak's leaves of gold. The monarch called a Brahman near and said, "Now speed away to Kasyapa Sun, the mighty seat, and with all reverence say the holy child he holds so dear." the hermit of the noble mind whose equal it were hard to find return is dwelling here go and instead of me do thou before that best of hermits bow that still he may for his dear son show me the favor i have won soon as the king these words had said to kasyapa's son the brahman sped before the hermit lo he bent and did appearance reverent then with meek words his grace to crave the message of his lord he gave the high soul father of his bride had called thy son his rights to guide those rights are over the steed is slain the noble child is come again soon as the saint that speech had heard his spirit with desire was stirred to seek the city of the king and to his cot his son to bring with angst disciples at his side forth on his way the hermit hide while peasants from their hamlets ran to reverence the holy man each with his little gift of food forth came the village multitude and as they humbly bowed the head what may we do for thee they said then he of brahmins first and best the gathered people thus address now tell me for i fain would know why is it i am honored so they to the high soul saint replied our ruler is with thee allied our master's order we fulfill o brahman let thy mind be still with joy the saintly hermit heard each pleasant and delightful word and poured a benediction down or on king and ministers and town glad at the words of that high saint some servants hasten to acquaint their king rejoicing to impart the tidings that would cheer his heart soon as the joyful tale he knew to meet the saint the monarch flew the guest gift in his hand he brought and bowed before him and besought this day by seeing thee i gain not to have lived my life in vain now be not worth with me i pray because i wild thy son away the best of brahmins answer made be not great lord of kings afraid thy virtues have not failed to win my favor o thou pure of sin then in the front of the saint was placed 
the king came next in joyous hail and with him entered his abode mid glad acclaim as on they rode to greet the sage the reverend crowd raised suppliant hands and humbly bowed then from the palace many a dame following well dressed santa came stood by the mighty saint and cried see on us souls thy son's dear bride the saint who every virtue knew his arms around his daughter threw and with a father's rapture pressed the lady to his wondering breast arising from the saint's embrace she bowed her low before his face and then with palm to palm applied stood by her hermit father's side he for his son as laws ordain performed the right that frees from stain and honored by the wise and good with him departed to the wood ज्ञानकोश इतिहास रामायण बाय पैक्ट ज्ञानकोश वाल्मीकि रामायण बालकांड ओम गणानांत्वा गणपति हवामह कवी कवीनापोत्रवत्तम जैक्टराज ब्रह्मणा ब्रह्मण पथानृण्मनोतिदन अपदापहर्ता दातारम सर्वसंपदा लोकाभिराम श्रीराम भूय भूय नमा मनोजव मरुतुल्यगम जितेन्द्रिय बुद्धिमता वरिष्ठ वाताज वनरयूध मुख्यम श्रीरामदूत शिसा नमा कुजन राम रामेति मधुर मधुराक्षर आरूह्य कविता शखा वंदे वाल्मीकिल Valmiki Ramayana Balakanda Canto 19 The Birth of the Princess The season 6 in rapid flight had circled since that glorious right 11 months had passed away it was Chaitra's ninth returning day the moon within that mansion shone which Aditi's looks kindly on raised to their apex in the sky five brilliant planets beamed on high shone with the moon in cancer sign rishapati with light divine kaushalya bore an infant blessed with heavenly marks of grace impressed rama the universe lord a prince by all the worlds adored new glory queen kaushalya one reflected from her splendid sun So Aditi shone more and more, the mother of the gods, when she, the king of the immortals, bore the thunder-wielding deity. The lotus eyed the beauteous boy. He came fierce, Ravana to destroy. From half of Vishnu's vigor born, he came to help the worlds forlorn. And Queen Kaikeyi bore a child. of truest velour bharata style with every princely virtue blessed one fourth of vishnu manifest sumitra two a noble pair called lakshman and satrugna were of high emprise devoted true shares in vishnu's essence too neat pushyapa mansion minas sign was bharata born of soul benin The sun had reached the crap at morn when K- Queen Sumitra's babes were born. What time the moon had gone to make his nightly dwelling with the snake. The high-souled monarch's consort bore 
at different times those glorious four like to himself and virtues bright as prashoda padas for full light then danced the nymphs celestial throng the minstrels raised their strain the drums of heaven pealed loud and long and flowers came down in rain within ayodhya blitz and gay all kept the joyous holiday the spacious square the ample road with mimes and dancers overflowed and with the voice of music rang where minstrels played and singers sang and shown a wonder to behold with dazzling show of gems and gold not did the king his largesse spare for minstrel driver bard to share much wealth the brahmanas bore away and many thousand dined that day soon as each babe was 12 days old it was time to naming right to hold when saint vasista rapt with joy assigned a name to every boy rama to him the high souled heir bharata to him kaikeyi bear of queen sumitra one fair son was lakshmana and sadrugna one rama he said supreme delight like some proud banner cheered his sight and to all creatures seem to be the self existent deity all heroes versed in holy lore to all mankind great love they bore fair stores of wisdom all possessed with princely graces all were blessed but made those youths of high descent with lordly light preeminent like the full moon unclouded shone rama the world's dear paragon he best the elephant could guide urge the fleet car the charger ride a master he of bowman skill joying to do his father's will the world's delight and darling he loved lakshman best from infancy and lakshman lord of lofty fate upon his elder joy to wait striving his second self to please with friendship sweet observances his limbs the hero never would rest unless the touch his brother press except beloved rama shared he could not taste the meal prepared when rama pride of raghu's race sprang on his steed to urge the chase behind him lakshman loud to go and guard him with his trusty bow as rama was a was to lakshma dear more than his life and ever near so fond satrugna prized the bow his very life his bharata's love illustrious heroes nobly kind in mutual love they all combined and gave their royal sad delight with modest grace and warrior might supported by the glorious four shone dasharatha more and more as though with every guardian god who keeps the land and skies the father of all creatures trod the earth before men's eyes ज्ञानकोश इतिहास रामायण बाय पैक्ट ज्ञानकोश वाल्मीकि रामायण बालकांड ओम गणना गणपति हवामहे कवि कवीनापोत्रवत्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मण ब्रह्मण पथानृण्वन्वतिदन अपदापर्ता दातारम सर्वसंपदा लोकाभिराम श्रीराम भूय भूय नमा्यह मनोजव मरुतुल्य वेगम जितेन्द्रिय बुद्धिमता वरिष्ठ वाताजम वनरयूध मुख्यम श्रीरामदूत शिसा नमा 
कुजन्तन राम रामेति मधुरम मधुराक्षरम आरुह्य कविता शाखा वंदे वाल्मीकि कोकिल कौसल्या सुप्रजा राम पूर्वा संध्या प्रवर्तते उत्तिष्ट नरचारदूल कर्तव्य दैवक वाल्मीकि रायण बालकांड कैंटो ट्वेंटी विश्वामित्र विजिट नव दशरथास पायस माइंड मीट वेड लॉक फॉर हिस सन्स डिजाइन विथ प्रीस एंड फ्रेंड्स द किंग बिगैन टू काउंसिल एंड प्रिपेयर हिज प्लान सच थॉट्स एंगेज हिज बोजम वेन टू सी अयोध्या लॉर्ड ऑफ मैन ए माइटी सेंट ऑफ ग्लोरियस फेम द हरमेट विश्वामित्रा केम for he will finds that roam by night disturbed him in each holy rite and in their strength and frantic rage assailed with witchery is the sage he came to seek the monarch's aid to guard the rites the demon stayed unable to a close to bring one unpolluted offering seeking the king in his dis- dire strait he said to those who kept the gate haste waterers to your master run and say that here stands gandhi's son soon as they heard the holy man to the king's chamber swift they ran with minds disordered all and spurred to wildest zeal by what they heard on to the royal hall they sped there stood and lovely bowed the head and made the lord of men aware that the great saint was waiting there the king with priest and peer arose and ran the sage to meet as indra from his palace goes lord brahma self to greet when glowing with celestial light the pious hermit was inside the king whose main his transport showed the honored gift for guests bestowed not did the saint that gift despise offered as holy text advice he kindly asked the earth's great king how all with him was prospering the son of kaushik bade him tell if all in town and field were well all well with friends and kith and kin the royal treasures stored within do all thy neighbors own thy Way, thy foes confess thee yet. Dost thou continue still to pay to gods and men each debt? Then he, of hermits first and best, was his star with a smile addressed, and asked him of his welfare too, showing him honor as was due. Then, with the sainted hermit, all went joyous to the monarch's hall. and sat them down by due decree each one of rank and dignity joy filled the noble prince's breast who thus bespoke the honored guest as amrit by a mortal found as rains upon the thirsty ground as to an hairless man a son born to him of his precious one as gain of what we sorely miss as sudden dawn of mighty bliss so is thy coming here to me all welcome mighty saint to thee what wish within thy heart hast thou if i can please thee tell me how hail saint from whom all honors flow worthy of all i can bestow blessed in my birth with fruit today nor has my life been thrown away I see the best of Brahman rays, and night to glorious morn gives place. Thou holy sage in days of old, among the royal saints and rolled, didst penance glorified within the Brahman caste high station when this meet and right in many a way that I to thee should honor pay. This seems a marvel to my eyes. All sin thy visit purifies. and i by seeing thee o sage 
have rip, reaped the fruit of pilgrimage. Then say what thou wouldest have me to do, that thou hast sought this interview. Favoured by thee, my wish is still, O Hermit, to perform thy will, nor needest thou at length explain the object that thy heart would gain without reserve, I grant it now. O Deity, O Lord, art thou. The glorious Hermit, far renowned with highest fame and virtue crowned, rejoice these modest words to hear delightful to the mind and ear.